Yeah, you could tell this game was different, though. As soon as they went to halftime, and I remember my sister texted me because she's watching the game. She doesn't really know what's going on. She's thinking, do you think the Bucks are going to win? And I told her, I said, no, this is what the Chiefs do is – they make their name falling behind and then scoring 25 in a row or whatever. And they came out and they only got a field goal. And that's when I knew it was over because that is what the chiefs do is they come out and they just make the adjustments and throw the ball over the field. And Mahomes is scrambling around and he definitely was scrambling around tonight, but in a different way. Um, And them settling for that field goal after the drive actually looked promising in the beginning uh, that was a huge indicator to me that the Bucks defense really had them figured out. And the biggest part of this game was that they were getting to Mahomes consistently. It was this offensive line. You know, we had three of their top offensive linemen were all out, either injury or uh, our boy Duvernay Tardif opted out. And uh, they had guys who they picked up off the waiver wire. I think their center at one point, they benched him and then brought him back into the fold and, going up against this Tampa Bay front line that had just gotten better every single game in the playoffs, they had no chance. And that meant Mahomes had no chance of going through his reads properly because he had a second to one and a half seconds to even make a decision before he was running for his life. And in the fourth quarter, it really came to be because the Bucks could smell blood in the water, but uh, it was all game where he was running for his life and he made some, incredible play some of the screenshots of the one where he's like completely horizontal looks like a college football play where the ball just flies out of his hand but he generated no power but somehow just goes 30 yards down the field and then hits the guy right in the helmet and yeah just that was that was the epitome of last night was just Mahomes trying his best walking on a turf toe that he's got to have surgery on whipping the ball all over the place but again no help from some of his receivers yeah, I mean, he looked, uh, he'd be limping in between plays. I'd be like, huh, guess guess that might be it. Like, he's he's not going to be able to do the same things. And then he'd go out and, like, scramble for a first down or make one of those ridiculous throws. And I was like, is what? Is he just, the adrenaline, like, kicks in as soon as he snaps it and he just can't feel that toe? That probably is pretty close to. He does typically have a bit of, like, a weird gait. So I don't, it, it obviously was a little bit more exaggerated than normal, but he does kind of look like that normally. He just is an unorthodox, like, athlete. The way he moved his arms and such walking around yeah. kind of caught my eye a couple times, too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's it, fun. The first, the first couple drives, I mean, both defenses put the pressure on early. I don't know if you caught this. And the difference was Mahomes was able to scramble for first downs. Whereas Brady kind of just had to accept the losses. I was like, oh, this is it. This is going to be the story. But yeah, it, that and, and that is something that you will often see in the Super Bowl because there's so much adrenaline for these guys jacked up that most Super Bowls start really slowly. Like that's the first time Tom Brady's ever scored more than three points in a first quarter. Uh, first time Gronk's ever had a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And, and yeah, just some some firsts for them tonight. If there's going to be any team that comes out with that laser sharp focus, it's going to be a Tom Brady team because he's now been here 10 times and, and knows exactly how the game goes. Uh, but he wasn't incredible, but he was what I thought he was going to be. He wasn't going to turn the ball over and he was going to put his receivers in position to make big plays. And uh, it turned out to be Gronk and it turned out to be Antonio Brown and Leonard Fournette, three guys that all came to Tampa Bay because of Tom Brady. Feels kind of like a LeBron type story where he brings the free the uh, bargain bin guys with him, and they end up being a huge uh, part of the success. But yeah, he no turnovers. I think he was just a little bit over 200 yards, and was super super efficient. He didn't have a lot of throwaways. He was just hitting guys, dinking and dunking, and and they relied on Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette, who if they're not putting the ball on the ground, then it's going to be really, really hard to stop the Bucks' offense because 
Uh, they're they're good for three or four every time they touch the ball, and then they set up play action a couple times to different guys. It was just really well run offense and really well run defense. Like the Chiefs got out coached both sides of the field because um, the Buccaneers linebackers have been fantastic, and they were again tonight. There's only so much you can do against Travis Kelsey, but they really limited the damage from him, and they were doubling Tyreek Hill all night. Their goal was just not to get beat like they did way back when these teams played each other the first time. Uh, and so there was lots to help over top on Tyreek. He looked frustrated. And uh, yeah, big kudos to Todd Bowles and, and Byron Leftwich. They had fantastic game plans that, that were executed to perfection tonight. So we shall move on to the story that was not necessarily part of the game itself, obviously played a huge role in the game, but was not the players. It was the refs, uh, and that was kind of the big moment in the Super Bowl that really changed the tide of the game. Was that those kind of first or those last two drives for the Bucks in the first half, where there was a pass interference uh, on Breland on a deep ball to Mike Evans, and then a pass interference uh, in the end zone that got placed at the one yard line, and the Chiefs actually ended up getting the stop, but then they gave the ball back to the Bucks. Um, Chiefs score a field goal. Bucks get the ball back with a minute left. The Chiefs call two timeouts, trying to get the ball back with time left, and and the Bucks convert the third down. Uh, then they get some shots down the field, uh, and they end up scoring a touchdown on that drive. It looked very similar to the Green Bay Packers game in that regard, and very very shocking again that the team team was making the same mistakes. Two like two games in a row. How did you not watch the Green Bay film? Um, yeah, and then that really was the, the the swinging moments was the combination of those two drives. And I know you sent me that cool stuff on the uh, defensive pass interference. I didn't really have an issue with most of the calls except for the the one in the end zone where it seemed like Brady threw the ball like way out the back of the end zone, and there is a certain degree of which like uncatchableness plays a factor in the pass interference but it seems like they've kind of gotten away from that rule in recent years like you really have to throw it out into like the seats for it to be uncatchable so uh I, so in the end I ended up understanding that in the moment I was a little bit heated because I thought it was a bad call but if you look back the Chiefs really shot themselves in the foot on defense with some of the bad unsportsmanlike conducts and and lining up offside on a field goal just like really basic stuff that they weren't doing right and it goes back to just the the mismatching coaching on this night yeah uh shout out to Jane Coaston my favorite political analysis formerly with Vox now with the New York Times <laughs> who's a part-time college football tweeter and for one night of the year tweets about the NFL that night being the Super Bowl, who's, I think, observed that between 2010 and 2015, four of the five teams that won the Super Bowl were either second or first in the league in receiving like defensive pass interference calls on their side. Um, I didn't, I'm not a huge football junkie, and it's so hard to understand or not understand, but objectively evaluate the calls made in football just because there's so much going on in so many plays that you can't possibly see it all. So you can't really say like, oh, they're calling that, but they're not calling this because you only really see what they're calling. You don't see like maybe Tampa Bay was doing similar holding and it got missed, but probably not. I imagine for like the most money invested sporting event of the year they have enough refs and enough eyes to see it all so my interpretation of the refing is just there's like it's not about the catching there's just a certain level of um i don't know what the word is cl cleanness on defense that the league is looking to see and the chiefs just fell short of the bar and that gave so many third down opportunities where it might have been switched to fourth down and given Mahomes a chance to fire and get out ahead. It instead let uh, Tampa build up that lead that crushed in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And even if some of those penalties hadn't gone their way, it just the fact that they were getting so much pressure with only four guys rushing the passer and 
the way that Mahomes was running for his life. You could have seen some other thing that would have gone wrong. You could have had a lot more holding penalties on the Chiefs' old line that would have ended up having similar results or Mahomes gets forced into an interception. Kind of the one that got tipped earlier in the game wasn't necessarily his fault, but you could have seen that happening again. Uh, oh, and he had the one late. and So two picks in that game, which is surprising but uh, I had the under on the interception so that was one of the few that I hit uh, in that game um, yeah and that that pretty much decided the game the second half was pretty boring like I said I, I knew the game was over I was getting ready to clean up and uh, not bathe in the Tom Brady uh, walk around fame all the kids holding the trophy and the Super Bowl MVP speech and the TB12 method. I didn't need to hear all that. <laughs> so yeah, I it, came I down and prepped. For- I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoy like a Stanley Cup celebration. I mean, first of all, I was very confused to not see the commissioner get booed. And then... Oh, he didn't? See, I truly, like, I didn't watch it. (laughs) Maybe they've just mastered the audio levels so much where they just, like, have celebratory noises, like, blaring in the stadium and, like, certain mics, and it's an open field, so the sound probably doesn't reverberate the same way it does, like, inside an arena. And then, I guess, mixed feeling. Happy to see the coach get a chance to talk. Not it's weird to see the GM is the first guy who gets a mic and gets the trophy. I what I mean, it wasn't the same as watching like the handoff to the captain and then just like the pure jubilation as the trophy gets passed around. So mm-hmm. that was less enjoyable. I, the one I was, I very much enjoyed that third quarter. I thought that uh, the bucks needed to be very clinical and, put out like exactly that performance that they did and it was a matter of threading a needle so i'll just add that in before we uh move yeah. on to it, it was just that was when the game was over as the chiefs got that field goal and the bucks immediately came down and scored such an efficient touchdown on the drive and i said oh this looks like a team this is what looks like like normal chiefs games where a team will score a field goal thinking that that's enough and kansas city will just come down and put their foot on their throat trading three for seven yeah. and the chiefs got to taste their own medicine in that third quarter it was yeah that that was just a truly uh masterful drive at the beginning of the second half of the for the bucks i think i've just read too much of that uh football manga which is like full of comebacks so i really don't like let go of my breath until it's like well and truly over Um, And that served me really well in the 2017 Super Bowl with the comeback, the because I wasn't even like phased. I was like, no, they're still in this. They still got this. And then they went and come back. And I guess I've watched uh, same with the uh, Chiefs last year. So I don't know. I I truly in football don't think it's over till it's really over. And that, I guess, maybe keeps me holding my breath a little longer than the average person which is probably going to make me look silly nine times out of ten but yeah but but then one of those ten times you get it right 